I know you can hear me breathing, but we will not start the stream for another 29, no, 19 seconds, I guess. And I even blocked the clock, nice, I suck. I don't even know why I bother. I guess it gives people time to come in, but not that anyone ever does. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, previously we were unhappy because Stellarium was giving us some problems saying that our eclipse calculations were incorrect. And our um, and that sucked. So what we're going to do is, um, and I, we think the problem is Stellarium is using two different, uh, their, their uh, coordinates are two different from the ones used by uh, by Sea Spice, which are, should also be the ones used by Horizons. So we're going to try to now see if um, Horizons gives us any better of a uh, any better luck here with um, with uh, with what we're trying to do. Okay, so according to this, uh, these are um, lunar eclipses of Metis, and let's actually be a little bit nicer here, and we'll just say like in the middle of this eclipse. Um, which will be this time here. So what we're going to do is from Metis, we're going to look at the Sun and we're going to look at Jupiter and we're going to compare the positions uh, to the ones given by Stellarium. And if they're off by enough, we can kind of trust that uh, the problem is Stellarium and not, not that the calculations are incorrect. Uh, so that's the way we're going to go with this. Um, so let's go ahead and get this all set up now. And uh, just to be on the safe side, we're going to use the middle of the eclipse, which is uh, give or take January 1st at about noonish. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go over here. I guess the stream's already started, so we don't need this anymore. Um, so let's go and go to Horizons, which I don't know if I have. Um, I do not have that bookmarked. That is not difficult to do, though. There's a whole bunch of warnings here saying everything's going to change, but it either has changed or it won't change. So either way. So we want to be looking at the observer location. We want to be Metis, the uh, moon of Jupiter. And the problem here is we're going to be on the center of Metis, so it's not quite the same as being on the surface of Metis. But um, I think we're I think we're okay. Um, no matching. Okay, search. Search, damn it. Well, all right, stand by. So I think, um, let's see if that works. Yeah, there it is, Meta's Body Center 500 at 516, that's the 16th satellite of Jupiter. The target body we're first going to say is going to be Jupiter itself. Um, so that should be fine. And that didn't work for some reason. Yeah, this is not the greatest thing in the world. And we'll look at Jupiter, Jupiter, not the very sun. It doesn't really matter, though. Um, and the interesting thing is, uh, so let's go ahead and get our time correct as well. And our time is January 1st. Um, we'll go from noon to 10 minutes past noon on January 1st. Okay, and we'll take a step size of one minute. I think that should be fine. And now, so we should say that if you're um, on Metis, looking at Jupiter, this is where you should see it. And the idea here is to prove that uh, either um, Stellarium is wrong or we are wrong. So, okay. So we're saying it's going to be about... So let's go and go back into Stellarium, which I shut down because I was angry at it. Never a good reason. Let me make sure it's still not running. It's not. Stellarium. And so now we can go to... Um, yeah, I keep forgetting when we do that, we actually do get a reset on the time um, also. So, uh, sorry, the position also. So let's go ahead and go to Metis. Okay. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I should say Metis uh, Center, because we already have that defined. OK. 
Okay, we're on Metis at the center. Doesn't really mean the center. It just means we're at uh, um, we're at the zero zero point. Okay, um, and we're looking at Jupiter. We're going to set our time to be one one at noon. So twelve zero zero, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the clock just to make life easier. Okay. So let's go ahead and find Jupiter. Not too hard to find. Big frickin' planet. Um, okay. So... Now I gotta be careful here. Um, these numbers are very different and we gotta be careful because I don't know exactly uh, what the right ascension and declination are meaning in this case. So... Um, so maybe this isn't really the best way to do it. So we would expect a, this is in the ICRFJ2000 frame, we would expect it to be declination of about 25 plus 25, and that's the same frame that Earth would be in. Um, and that declination, okay, but hang on, now we're looking at the, um, we're clearly very far north, so let's go ahead and put a um, uh, equatorial grid on there. Um, actually, hmm, um, it's a very strange way to look at this grid, but, um, let's see if we can kind of turn it so it's like this. Okay. Okay, let me go and center Jupiter again. That was kind of stupid of me there. All right, so, um, let's see. Now, according, if I do go in far enough, I think it, I will break Stellarium, and I will not. Um, so we cannot see stars behind Jupiter. We might be able to turn off Jupiter's, um, we might be able to turn off Jupiter, now that just turns off the labels, it doesn't turn off the, um, okay. So let's see how close this is. This is the, um, Alnair, okay. Let's see, I know where Altair is sort of close to the equator, I think. Um, I'm wrong, actually. It's, um, okay, so it's plus 8 degrees, a little bit um, north. So this is uh, right at, um, so is this towards the north? I guess this is north, okay. So the position of Jupiter here does not look like it is matching the position of Jupiter given by horizons. Um, six hours and 25, uh, you know, six hours of little right ascension and 25 of declination. And it doesn't look like we're getting anywhere near that because the six hour line's over here. Um, but the real question is, we're going to do this now for the sun. And the real question is how far apart they are. They should be pretty close at this point because we have, um, because we've sort of caught it in the middle of an eclipse. Uh, the really bad thing here is going to be um, that if this is true, we're going to have to convince people that our data is correct and the other data is incorrect. That Stellarium is incorrect, which I don't even like thinking of as being true. Really? Just the frickin' sun. Okay. Same time frame, only thing that's changed is we're looking at the sun. And here we go. Okay. So not that close, but like 6 hours, 25 minutes, at 23, 12, 25. So now the question is if we can find the sun from here, and find it's really, really far away. Oh my god. Yeah, so I think this is... Um, this is pretty good proof that um, Stellarium sucks, I guess. So now, so n what's interesting here is the right ascension and declination of the sun is fairly correct. I mean, 6 hours, 25 minutes, and 23. Let's take a look here. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. Actually, it's got the sun right. Uh, the position of Jupiter, however, is way off. Why is that? That's not the center of Jupiter. Oh, we're, we're diverted enough that it's okay. So the position of Jupiter, not even close. 
So, uh, let's, I mean, this is 12 o'clock. I mean, we sh this should be, um, this should be, this is, uh, this is bad. Um, and I guess I'm not, this is like very bad. This is not even close. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess I don't know what's going on here. I guess we want to um, complain uh, to the Stellarium people. Oh, hello, did you call NASA? Uh, hello, Fierce Crocodile, good to see you again. I didn't repeat your chat because people can see it. I have not called NASA, and at this point I might have to call out Stellarium. Um, I'm confused, though, as to whether I'm seeing an actual error or I'm just seeing something um, based on based on how Stellarium computes uh, po positions. So to them, this might be accurate. To NASA, it might not be accurate. But um, I, I guess what I want to know is how Stellarium computes um, Jupiter moon positions. So that's what uh, Mita says. Um, could be a problem in the position of the moons. Uh, Jupiter moon's positions are off, so this is already bad. Um, yeah, this is probably the light minute, so that's not the big deal there. Um, finding Jupiter's moons. So I'm wondering if there's actually a way in Stellarium to say, give me the coordinates um, of, you know, of these things here, the actual XYZ coordinates in the ICRF 2000 frame. I don't think you can do that here. I don't think that's one of the options that you have. Um, all available, so you've got everything showing. Um... Render solar shadows. And so it might be that the position of the moons, except for the, f the four Galilean moons, is way off. Um, which sucks, because that means we have... There is a program called Cosmographia that I actually managed to load up and install that is spice enhanced. It has the spice uh, correct kernels. Um, and we can run it, but unfortunately, it seems to suck even worse than uh, than Stellarium in terms of uh, it doesn't actually show you anything really well. So this this is not good. Um, this is definitely not good. So I'm trying to figure out what to do about this. Um, not not sure what to do here. Um, any suggestions from the peanut gallery? which is literally one person. Literally you, guy. Uh, fierce Crocodile. Okay. Um, let's see. Um... Oh, okay. Simulate light speed to on. I mean, that... I'll go ahead and do that. I thought I heard it set, though. Um, that could be up to a 40-minute delay, but we're not... Um, yes, I don't know. Okay, well, that. thank you. Um, let's see, I think F4 settings. Show planets. I uh, don't need to show their... Oh, simulate light speed. Okay, so let's... I've turned that on now. Um... That didn't seem to help anything. I mean, it really shouldn't because we're on Metis, which is very, very close to. Um, yeah, this is this is this is just bad. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? Well, we can now. There's several things we can do now, including give up completely. But what we're going to do now is instead we're going to answer the other question about the Galilean moons because I think Stellarium gets those right. So there's no point in dealing with where Stellarium is wrong if we can at least um, 
if we can get where Stellarium is correct. And I think for the four moons of Jupiter, we have a pretty good, uh, we have a pretty good working uh, Stellarium there for that. But let's 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 double check that now because we're getting nervous and unhappy. Okay, so we want um, occultations 501. So this is the occultations. These are the not really the occultations, rather. These are the lunar eclipses of Io, um, as given by as given by the spice OC, you know, the, the spice occultation function. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so 11.46 a.m. on January the 2nd from our viewpoint on, on IO. So let's go ahead and go to IO. Um, actually, I think we can go to Jupiter and look at IO. That I think might work. Okay, now we're going to look at, and damn it, we're going to stop the freaking clock. That's pretty cool here. The clock is stopped, and yet things are moving around. So this is, um, that is pretty bad. All right. I'll okay, let's zoom in. Um, and let's go to January the 2nd. Let's go January the 2nd at whatever time that was, 11.46. And so this is Io. We're hoping it'll work better. And I think we said just 11.46. Okay. Well, it's good. Io is at full phase, which is how you get a lunar eclipse. is only when the moon is full. And we're saying 11.46, it began. It hasn't really begun yet. But that's not actually okay. Let me get rid of the equatorial grid I created earlier. Okay, well this is good. IO looks pretty good. Now let's see if as we, we track it, it gets much fainter. Now it's getting a little bit fainter here in magnitude uh, as, we, as we presume, as we continue. And it's getting much, much fainter now. And there we saw that it suddenly dropped off to 12.25. Uh, so let's see if we can find that time again. And I think we did this before, so I'm kind of hesitant to do it again. But Okay, so that happened at 11.49, whereas we said 11.40. So that's not too bad, even though now we're using NASA's own my bob. And then 1401 is when it comes out of it according to NASA, not according to us. We, we're a little bit, we're, we're giving a little bit different answer. That sucker moves. Okay, I think we just saw that happen at very close to 1401, which is... Um, Okay, so now I guess the question is, um, we have two ways of c computing lunar eclipses on Io. One is sort of the NASA approved spice way, which we will refer to as, uh, all right, we'll go ahead and make a little directory for this called 2020-01114 because that's today's date. So the occultations, um, Io spice 2020, that's that. And then we'll do the same thing using my program, uh, which is not from Spice, IOBC 2020. Okay. Oh. Oh my god, I misspelled occultations. Ooh. Oh, that's bad. Uh, fix... Occultations, misspelling. But to do that, I have to I have to fix a couple other things too. So let's not worry about it for right now. B C O C O T B C occult. There we go. Okay. 
So now we have two predictions of lunar eclipses on Io, one based on the central eclipses, meaning the center of the, the moon is eclipsed, uh, and the other from me, meaning the, the edges of the moon are eclipsed. Um, so let's see. Um, I guess... Oh, space. And there's a way to see stop at the first stop at the first match. Um, that's not helpful at all. Uh, but there is a way to say stop at the first match in each um, n matches. Ignore case in reg x color without match with match number. Um, so this should give us the first hit in each one of them. Uh, well, which it does. The only problem is it's not exactly what we wanted. Um, so maybe we'll say 599. Nope, because apparently the parameters are all going to print out. So let's say 1577, the time, the Unix time. Uh, and there we go. So let's see. Hang on one second while I try to get rid of all the spam on my screen. Okay. So now we have um Okay, so here's the prediction. I'm kind of tempted to use another time because we don't want to be um we don't want to be stuck to the very first one which might be special. Okay, so here we are. These are very close. So I say the eclipse goes from, and I'm talking about even a partial eclipse, goes from here to here. Now I guess mine only tells you about um, total eclipses, I think. And NASA's central eclipse says it's going to happen from here to here, to this time, this is the spice prediction. Um, and sorry, I keep getting distracted. Um, so really, within two minutes of each other, it's not bad, actually. Um, so honestly, I'm not even sure it's worth looking at. These are, these are two-minute time differences. So let me see. I, I forget how I'm running my the other... Um, Occultations, that is just bad. Okay, you see occultations, see? And I forget which one I'm looking for here, zero or one. Um, and the function I am using, uh, my GFQ is the penumbral data with one, and that means I am looking at penumbral data. Um, when param is 1, return, hang on, I'm getting some real discord obnoxiousnesses here. Um, man, I think it's discord, either that or somebody else is beeping me for something else. I have no idea. I just get these noises. I hear, hear voices in my head. Okay, so with param equals 1, uh, if there's no total eclipse, okay. So, this is actually looking for... Um, these are looking for total eclipses here. Okay. I'm getting like tons of beeping noises. Let's see what the hell's going on here. I'm so confused. Um, I don't think it's from this machine because this machine doesn't know how to do that. Okay, it's getting obnoxious now. If someone knows what someone's doing this just to annoy me, that's fine. Let me know. Uh, hang on. Um. Oh. I found it, and it's not something we need. Sorry, sorry. Had to go delete something. Um. Okay, so, uh, this is, this is from... So right now we're looking at um, uh, 
There's no total eclipse anywhere on Q. So between 0 and 1, uh, we're talking about a partial eclipse. Greater than 1, we're talking about a total eclipse. Um, and what I'm looking for is here is greater than 1. So I'm looking at total eclipses only. Um, whereas NASA, the one we're doing for NASA, we're looking for any eclipse of the center, which is different from a total eclipse. Jesus Christ, this, I'm going to kill myself on this one. Um, so let's see. So what I'm looking for here is only when the entire planet is eclipsed. Um, and so between 0 and 1 is when there's basically a, uh, an eclipse somewhere. There's a partial eclipse uh, uh, somewhere on that planet. And... Let's see what parameter zero does. Okay. Okay. So I think what I really want is I want to see all the partial eclipses of um, of Io, and then from those partial eclipses, we can see if there's a total eclipse inside that partial eclipse. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and BC get this before I go completely mad. Unless it's already all saved, I don't oh it is, it's all it's all up to date. Okay, so what this is gonna do is gonna show me all the partial eclipse um right, all the partial lunar eclipses. And then what I could do inside of here, in this little time frame that we have during the partial eclipse see if the partial eclipse ever goes total. Um, so this, if this works, I should be able to show that the partial eclipse of uh, 2021, you know, of our moon, uh, is, we could, we could look at the partial components of it, even though it probably won't catch the total components of it. So let me go ahead and remake, and I want to make sure that um, BC occultations, it did, did make nicely. Um, wonder if oh, spice occultations didn't change enough. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. It's going to be, uh, let's see, our moon. The sun is the shining object, and we're gonna say 2120 to 2022. Here we go. And I want to see if this is the one that's uh, no, the one that we we're not getting as a full eclipse. I think is the one on ju in July. So hopefully this will t turn out with something with July in it. Nope, it maybe it is the one in me. Hang on. Okay. So this is the May 26, 2021 eclipse, which I think I've got freaking memorized at this point. Um, that's my stream. Okay, not that. Not that. Not that. timeanddate.com and I want to search for 2021 lunar eclipse or eclipse uh, there it is and by the way notice how close the umbra comes even in their own diagram um, okay so what I'm saying is the Partial eclipse begins at 9.46, they say 9.44, and I say the partial eclipse ends at 12.51, they say 12.52. So it's, it's very good. It's very good that we have that. Penumbra, we're not really interested in. You can't really see penumbral eclipses. Um, okay. So, so this is good. And now what we're going to do is we'll say, well, if you're inside of a, um, if you're inside of a penumbral eclipse, like we are here, uh, let's see if we can now look for a total eclipse inside of the penumbral eclipse. Uh, and that, that'll be, um, so we're going to be careful here. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit careful here. 
This is for a partial so uh, partial lunar eclipse, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna call it GFK two, so we don't have. Um, this is for a total lunar eclipse, and for a total lunar eclipse, what we want uh, is GFQ two, and for this we want um, the parameter is zero here. I think. I think I'm gonna double check that here in a minute. Um, and when we make that parameter zero, uh, no, I guess we want one here too. This is. Um, Yeah, I'm sorry, we do need a 1 here also, we just, um... Oh, actually, then it's the same function. So, we can actually use... This is for at least a partial lunar eclipse. Here we just see if it's greater than 0, but here... Uh, we need to create a new window, CN find 2. Um, or wait, can we...? No, we can't reuse CN find because we're looping through it. And here's where I'm going to be clever. I'm going to say CN finer because we're looking at a much smaller window, a finer window as it were. And so here we're going to say um, we're going to okay, i got to be careful here because we want to, we have to empty out CN finer each time, we do not want it to be, um, we do not want it to, to grow each time and insert new things into it. Um, I'm also pretty sure you cannot define, um, because it's a macro, I don't think you can actually define it inside of, um, well, maybe we can. In the, in the for loop, every time declare a new one, now I cringe at that. So CN finer. So what we need to do here is we need to wipe out uh, CN finer, and then put it, uh, uh, put beg and end into it. So not CN finger. That's not what I said. CN finer. So I think there's a way to clear out a, a window, and then put something. I mean, you can always putting something into it's easy. That's the that's the INSD. This is the thing that uh, that'll put something into it. The problem is if it's not empty, we'll, we'll end up with a bunch of intervals in it that we don't necessarily want. Um, so I think I've already done this somewhere. So let me let me um, let me see if I have a clear out window. Okay. So BCR planets does say spice double cells are static, so you do have to clear them out sp explicitly. Um, Yes, here it is. This is um, well. This is exactly what we're doing here. We have to remove windows from CN Finer, and um, before we can insert any. Oh, you know what? We could. Okay, I see what's going to happen here. We could, as this thing is doing, we could. Um, you, we could insert into it first. And then at the end of this for loop, um, we could empty it out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So in other words, we, we don't have to empty it out before we use it. Um, so this is actually a little bit cleaner. Uh, and this is CN finer. So here we clear out the cell that we create. Empty out cell we inserted into earlier. So at any given time, the cardinality of this cell should be one. So now, let's see what we're doing here. Inside of our for loop, we can now say we can now insert the window WNINSD crap here. Right. So over here, we can now create a new little uh, CN finer window. Can be. Um, Beg to end, and then um, create a window uh, for the partial eclipse. So this is a window that lasts from the beginning of the partial eclipse to the end. And in this um, window, we can do this. Um, 
the search function here. Uh, partial clips. Um, is decreasing CN finer. And I guess we're going to need a second result window as well, uh, which we'll call, gosh, we're so clever, resulter. And are we going to have to get rid of, um, we're going to have to empty out resulter as well. And I'm not quite sure how to do that. Um, Cause I don't think uh, resulter might not, we might not end up putting anything into resulter. Um, so let's see. See and find there. Okay, so over here, why don't we just, um, why don't we look at the cardinality of resulter and see what happens? If it gets bigger and bigger, obviously we're in trouble. Um, print f uh, n of resulter, which is going to be a, a it's going to be w n card c of resulter. How many elements are there in resulter? And if resulter has any elements in it, that means we've actually gotten a uh, We've gotten a total eclipse in there somewhere. Um, so what do we want to do? Well, this might be enough for right now. Um, so this is okay because we're going to be uh, removing stuff from CN Finer. I wonder if there's just a way to, to blank it out instead of having to um, do this, instead of having to remove one window at a time. Let's run this and see what happens. That's, a, that's, that's always a good idea. When in doubt, run and see what the hell happens. Okay, Resulter has one, one, and something tells me that those are the same ones. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. If Resulter has one, it's saying there is a total eclipse on May 26th. All right, so I guess we're going to have, we have no choice here. Um, um, yeah, I guess this actually kind of belongs up here. Uh, so, blah, blah, blah. So what this does is this says if there's a partial eclipse, find the beginning and end times, print them out. Now we're seeing inside that partial eclipse, is there a total eclipse? Uh, if there is, we create this window for it. We um, And this time we're going to go by one second at a time because this is a very tiny window. Um, and I guess we have no choice here but to do... Um, WN card C returns a integer, right? Yes, it does. Okay, so let's go int J equals zero. J less than WN card of resulter, the second set of results. The results inside the first set of results. And it's bad when even I don't understand what I'm saying, so sorry. Um, and then over here, we want from the second set of results Wait, why is this not looping properly? That's fine, that's fine. Now we're inside of another loop. Oh, mismatch parentheses. There we go. And here we want, um, we need to get from this resulter um, the jth window and put the results, I don't want to put them into beginning and end because we already are using that. Um, I guess we're going to put them into beg2 and 2. Although I guess we're going to use our um, ER joke here. We'll extend it by saying beg er and ender. Okay. Okay. 
And so now, I guess we just print them out. Yeah, there's something funky going on here. Okay. So we don't really need all this stuff. We're going to say total um, percent F, percent F, percent F, percent F. And that will be the beginning and end time of the total eclipse, BEG2, N2, BEG2, N2. Uh, both in Unix time and in um, and in ephemeris time. And then once we're done with that, we will... But you know, actually, the more I think about it, the more I realize you're not going to have more than one total eclipse inside of a partial eclipse. Um, so this is... Pr this will only... So this is... The only reason I'm having the loop through J is because I think I, I haven't cleared out Resulter. So, and then we remove it from final, we go again. Oh boy. Um, did I actually, I want to make sure that actually compiled. Oh, sorry. Oh, beg to undeclared. N2 undeclared, that's not good. Oh, right, because they decided we we're going to be really clever and say, um, beggar, and er, beggar, and er. Okay. And this is okay because this is the window that we created. Um, compiles. I don't know why I did the last. We don't need that. Yeah, and we'll notice the total eclipse here. It actually just gives us the same results as um, as the partial eclipse. Over here, let's see if it's not behaving any better here. Um, so let's pump this up a little bit. See what we get here. Um, that didn't seem to improve things at all. Okay. Gonna be smart ass about it. Okay. Is there any case here where we're getting something that's not equal? Uh, apparently not. Alright, I'm suspicious now. Okay, so for every interval where there is a partial eclipse, um, find the times of the ith partial eclipse, print them out, create a new window um, called CN Finer that has, that only goes for the length of this eclipse, find where this is not correct. This is why we have a problem. Uh, we need it to be greater than one. That's the big, that's the big difference. So inside this partial eclipse, show us when there's a total eclipse and print it out. The only problem I'm having here is when I put these results into Resulter, I never clean out Resulter, so it should get bigger and bigger. Um, but let's just make sure this even compiles. Compiles, no, no errors. Interesting. So it says there will be a total eclipse. Uh, the total part of the eclipse will uh, start at this time and end at this time. Let's see if that's true. Alright, so this is the May 16th, 2022 eclipse. Um, and let's see. Okay, let me see if any of the other lunar eclipses are total because if they are, and my program missed them, we know it misses this one. We know it misses this one. That's okay. Um, okay, but the rest of them are not. So except for the one that we know it misses, this is the one on May 15th, May 16th. And this looks like it's a pretty good... The Earth covers it pretty well. 
So we say that the... Um, so let's actually look at all the times here. So, so we say the partial eclipse starts at this time. Uh, we say the partial eclipse ends at this time. And then above is where we say, okay, so 228 is when we say the partial begins, 330 is when the total begins. Let's take a look. 227, full at 329, we said uh, 330. We say it ends at 452. They say it ends at 453. We say the partial ends at, they say 555. We say 554. So this is some pretty good shit. This, this, is, this is good. We're finding the total eclipses here. The only thing that worries me is um, uh, Resulter is... Uh, you know what, let's actually go for a, like, like a nice long chunk of time here. Uh, let's go to 2050 and see if the total... Let's see if so, we, this causes a problem, basically. It's possible that Resulter just gets wiped out each time, so we don't have to clear it out explicitly. Um, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. Oh, I don't think it's getting any bigger. Wow. So I'm not seeing a problem here, but okay. Uh, let's take a look here. And over here. Um, oh, the 1st of January in the year 2048. And my, um, and my, let's see if that happens. Oh. I want more. Um. Does it not go that far? Oh, here it is. Right? And that should go all the way. All right, so where's the rest of them? Oh, next 10 years. Oh, here it is. So that is 2048, so we'll go from 2000 to 2049. In this one right here, 20, 2040 to 2049. Uh, and we're looking at the one in 2028. There might be more than one. 2048, I'm sorry. And this is the one, January 1st. And we say, before, we say the total eclipse will begin at 627 and end at 718. Um, 627. Yeah, we're, we're within two minutes of it. Not bad. I'm happy. Um, so this is apparently working. We This does tell us when there is a partial eclipse and when there is a total eclipse. So now, let me go ahead and BC get this before I forget. And we want to clean this up a little bit um, for printing purposes. Okay. So I'm not actually worried that 3600 is too big anymore because that only needs to catch the partial eclipses. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so my only, my only, my guess here is every time you use Resulter, it, it just gets clear, GFUDS C just creates a new result in Resulter, it doesn't add to the existing results. Uh, I know for a fact this thing inserts a new interval, so if you have an existing interval, you get more and more of them. So now, um, I'm trying to put this in a way that makes it easier to see when the order in which things happened. Uh, so I think we will have to make our printfs look a little bit nicer than this. Um, and let's see how we can do that. In other words, I don't think we'll be able to uh, list both start and end of the partial eclipse and then start and end of the total eclipse because those don't happen in that order. It goes partial start, total start, total end, partial end. And we kind of want to print them in that order. Um, because we're getting closer and closer to getting a result that we actually want to be able to print. Okay, so let's do this. Um, and so I think the first three things we want, 
are just the sort of a, a copy of what, what it is we're reporting on, so, because if they, we get lost, it's going to be ugly. Um, so, partial start. I don't know if I want to write that out. I don't think I do. And then we will say... And then we'll give both the ephemeris and the Unix time of that happening. So this will be moon ID, sun ID, planet ID, uh, then the word PS, that's fine, uh, ET to Unix of beg, and then just because we want it, the ephemeral time, the ephemeris time, big. Okay? So now... Uh, we will we will remember to do this, and I don't think we need this for loop here. That's kind of stupid. Okay. So then we print the beginning of the partial eclipse. Um, uh, and I guess then. So in the, in that partial eclipse window, we find out when there's a total eclipse, if any. And I think here we can just say find the first result because, ooh, actually, um, actually there's an issue here. Let's see, so we create this window and we, okay. So, so here's the issue. There might be zero results out of this. So if, If there's zero results, we don't need to print anything. If there's one result, we get the one result that there is, and we say percent %d, percent %d, percent %d, um, total eclipse start, percent %f, percent %f, this thing, and we're going to once again say moon ID, sun ID, planet ID, um, E2 Unix of beggar, and then just beggar by itself, and then total end, partial start, total start, total end, almost the same thing except that this will be the end of the total eclipse. Okay, and all that only happens if there is actually a total eclipse somewhere in there. Finally, we will print the end of this eclipse, the end of the partial eclipse. So, define total eclipse, if any, because there might not be one. And then when we're done with all that, we can now print the, um, we can now print the um, um, partial eclipse end, which of course is just end, and end, and because we're using a time, s we're using a time cell that needs to be recreated every time we remove, we empty it out, and restart it. So if this is correct, we're very, very close to our final solution. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to just say 2025 to, because this should look really, really nice. <whistles> That's not good. Um. And I think I know what's wrong. Uh, obviously, I meant to say zero here. The first, the first element in the resulter array is, of course, element zero, because it's zero indexed. So that blew up when the moment we found that we had a total eclipse. One more time. Partial start, partial end. See, here we go. This is, this is the thing I'm looking for here. So this is the eclipse that. Um, well, we use this one because I don't think we've tested this one. So here's where we're saying partial start here, total start here, total end here, and then partial end here. And so that is uh, November 8th, 2022. Those are the times we should be seeing. And let's see if we have that. Um, let's go back to eclipses. We need to go all the way back here. Um, let's 
It'll start off with the next 10 years. Okay. We might already be in trouble. Nove oh, 2022. Sorry. I going to say, because in 2021, there does not appear to be a second, uh, a second total eclipse. November 8th, total eclipse. And if our times match, I will be very happy. So 909, 1016, 1141, 1249. Um, yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. So we are, we're fairly confident that this is now giving us our partial eclipses and our total eclipses. So now, what do we do? Well now, um, let's see. So now we can do this for the four Jovian moons. And we probably need to extend the um, era from well, at this point, we actually probably need to figure out what the exact beginning and end times are here. So I think if I do this, it will not work because I'm going, yep. Insufficient, stage 501, yep, 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 can't do that. IOS doesn't go that far. Okay, that's fine. So now let's go back to where we're making some notes here. Occultations.txt. Um... Report bad positions to Stellarium, maybe. Um, but now we're going to um, for the Jovian satellites. We're okay. So now we're gonna now we're gonna look and see what is the, what are the um, limitations of the um, what what is the time frame for which we can ask for um, an IO. We can ask for IO's position. That will be. Come on. Uh, no, 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 no. Time span from JED. 1799 to 2200. And end of 1799 to beginning of 2200. Alrighty. So we should limit ourselves to 1800 to 2200. And I think that should that should be fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I need to give a little bit more space here so I can see what you're saying. Uh, it looks like you can calculate eclipses now uh, for the Jovian satellites. I got that nailed. Um, almost works for the Earth satellites. It doesn't quite. It doesn't work for the Moon. Either that or NASA is actually wrong uh, here. Um, damn. How do I get this so it's Um, yeah, let me go ahead and put a little, pretty cool, well, I thank you. And it even looks like we can verify this in um, Stellarium uh, for, the jo for the four big Jupiter satellites. Didn't work at all for Metis, something went horribly wrong there. So, um, so that we'll have to do something more with. But okay, so we want to go from 1800 to 2200, and just to be obnoxious, I will go from 1799 to 2201. Yep, didn't like that. So 1800 to 2200. Whoa. Uh, that should have worked. That should have worked. Yeah, we should be well within uh, the the parameters there. All right, hang on. This is for the f yeah, this is for IO and um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, that's for these bodies. Wait, where did I come up with 1800? Wait, 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 wait. Why the hell did I come up with 1800 and 2200? 
Where the hell did I see those numbers? Where the hell did I see 1799? Um, ephemeris fit to Earth-based and spacecraft data. Time span from... Okay, so there's something wrong here, I think. We can only go from 1850 to 2100. Uh, I think this time span means something else. But there's actually a way to check this. Um, and it's actually not a, it's not a bad idea to check this. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, thank you for saying pretty cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's do some more coding. Okay, so one thing we can do is, uh, let's see, let's go up here. We get all of the, um, the NAIF IDs. Um, defining Geometry Finder. Okay, so what we can do here is we can actually look to see what amount of data we have for each, uh, the moon, the planet, and the sun. Uh, there is a, a spice function that will check that for us. And that is, uh, it's, a, it's not a very difficult function to find. It is um, pretty basic, actually. I mean, I won't be able to find it, but, um, you know, if, if most people should be able to find it, I can't, though. All right, let's go over here and say spice again. Uh, yay, I'm smart enough now. Okay. Um... I forget what it's called. It's like a range function, but let's, let's see what it is. Ra nah, not a range rate search. Um, nope. Neither of those. Okay. Um, it's like start and end time or something. Um, okay. Delete a variable from the kernel pool. No. Confirm the existence. No. Furnish a... Okay, that's fine. Get character data from a kernel pool. Get double precision values from a kernel pool. Integers. Names of kernel pool variables. Kernel data. I think this might be it. Um, kernel information, kernel totals. Um, put character strings into a dump. Uh, not quite. Coverage, 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 coverage. That's what we're looking for. So what this tells us is the coverage window for a specified ephemeris object in a specified SPK file. That's probably not great, actually, but okay. Because um, I'd like to find the coverage across all the files that I have. Uh, let me see if there's a function for that. The, the key word here is coverage. That's what we're looking for. CK coverage. I don't think CK, we want SPK coverage. PCK coverage, SPK coverage. I think that's what the one we're looking at, and let's see what CK coverage is. Oh, in a specified CK file. Nope, gotta have a file there. All right, so what this will give us is the coverage window uh, for a specified ephemeris object in a specified SPK file. Uh, name of the file, name of the object, and then the return value will be a um, will be a window. And decode for each. Um, yeah, this is actually pretty ugly, but let's go ahead and do it. And the problem with this is. Um, it, it's the limitation is always going to be the moon. It's never going to be the planet or the sun. The sun we have like infinite coverage for. Um, but okay. SPK coverage. C. And here's where I really, really, really don't want to hard code. I'm going to, but I don't want to. Okay, so here's where we're going to say like in home user spice kernels Jup 310.bsp. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and say moon ID. And where are we going to put this result? <sighs> K. 
Can I actually use result because we're not using it yet for anything else? I mean, we will in a minute, but for right now, can I just put this into result? Okay. And uh, let's see. So over here, we want to. Okay. This should only have one interval in it because it, there's not like discontinuous intervals where we know. Um, wow, I'm really cheating here by using beg and end again. Print f. This is very very bad. Um, and then et to Unix. Uh, so this will tell us what our time frame of coverage is for IO, or well, for whatever planet we give it. And then this is so terrible we have to actually say um, testing and then exit minus one. Because this is just for testing. Okay, let's make and see if it will, if it will let us make. Wow, it's still made. Coverage. Okay. So let's see what this, uh, which one did I do first, the Unix state? This has to be the Unix state. All right, from 1850 to, I'm going to bet this is 2100 or 2100. Well, can't can't really disagree with that. Okay, so this is the uh, the moon's coverage window. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Or am I? Um, okay, coverage, blah, 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 blah. Um, and see, this is also bad. I really shouldn't be putting Jupiter 310 here. This could be any kernel, and I really want to loop through all of them. So this is kind of a hack. Um... This is not going to go well. So this is just crap that we're printing out for no good reason. Right, and that's where we decided that this is actually... The limitations here are going to be 1850 to 2100. So that's really what we need to be putting in here. Now, I might have screwed this up slight. No, I didn't. Oh, awesome. Testing, which really shouldn't be printed anymore. And then this will take a while. These are all the occultations of IO within the 250-year um, period covered by JUP310.bsp. And I will bet you anything that the coverage is the same for Ganymede. Well, it is. It's the same file. So it'll be the same coverage for Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of time. I'm not tremendously surprised by that. Um, probably should have um, thought, thought this through a little bit. Um, yeah, that this may be a, have been a mistake. Well, you know what, let's do this. Let's do uh, 2050. Let's do 2099 to 2100. I meant, of course, 2090 to 2100. Now I'm getting suspicious. Oh, yeah. Also, maybe we'll have Jupiter be the thing that covers it instead of the Earth. I think that would be a little bit better. Dun, 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 dun. It's not too bad. Hmm. 
This is printing slower than I thought it would actually. Wow. Yeah, this is kind of painfully slow almost. Um, and I think I know one way around this. Um, so we don't need to print this testing. Printing the coverage is not necessarily a bad idea, so we'll leave that in there. And printing out the number of, you know, the number of partial eclipses is also not a bad idea. So we'll, NRES is not a bad thing to print out here. Um, obviously, from the final result, we will limit ourselves to just the times and whether it's partial or total. But printing out how many of them we have is actually not, is, could be helpful. Especially if it's going to take forever to print out. Okay. And then we should get the... Another problem is if the number of... Um, results we get is higher than the, num the window size. So 2,063 results. And our window size here, I think, is 20,000. Oh, 10,000. Yeah, that's actually pretty close to... Um, that's pretty close to the limit there, actually. It's not good. Um, okay, so now let's go from 1850 to 2100. And if this number is bigger than uh, 10,000 or whatever, it means we have a, there's a mistake and we've run out of, there's more eclipses than we have and don't have the room to ha cover them all. But let's see how many eclipses it thinks there are. Um, taking longer than expected. Told ya. So the window only has size 20,000, two times 10,000, and we found more than that many eclipses. Well, I, okay, it's actually 10,000 intervals which have 20,000 numbers in them because each interval has a start and end time. Okay, so we'll just bump that up by 10. Um, I'm tempted to bump it up to a million, but let's, let's not go crazy. So this will take longer to start up, but it actually might be faster in terms of um, actually running because um, it has more memory to, de to run with. Um, or I could be wrong about that, I don't know. La 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 da, 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 da. Yeah, this is boring. Um, so this is, this is, we're at the point now we're actually running the code to get the answer that we want. Um, we, I think everything else is good. And um, this is just freaking lame. And so what I'm tempted to do is run this on my main machine, which has more power and then import the results back here because this this is not a there's nothing deep going on here right now um all right we'll get another 10 seconds and if that doesn't work i'll go ahead and run these on my other machine and we'll continue to do something else on this machine once we have the results from my other machine we will continue and we will answer the question about uh, lunar eclipses on jupiter so let's go ahead and kill that Going over to my other machine, which you cannot see me what I'm doing, but that's okay. Uh, let me go ahead and rebuild the... Um, okay. And we want to run... 
1850 to 2100. Um, and it's, what is it, 501-10599. I'm going to run a quick test to make sure that it even, you know, kind of works. Yeah. Wow, 413 partial eclipses in two years for IO. So, you know, quite, quite frequently. Well, that really chunks up the damn machine, even with that little time interval. So 1850 to 2100 is the full time interval. And that will be eclipses 501.txt, ampersand, and hopefully it'll run faster on my other machine, although my other machine is running this VM, so that's that's kind of difficult. Uh, that's it's kind of I'm 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 sort of screwing myself over there. Okay, so what are we going to do after all of this is done? Let's go ahead and add some README notes here. Um, import results from main machine. Spot check versus Stellarium, or create Stellarium script to sort of go between them. And then write Perl code to compute how long, how many moons eclipse total or uh, or partial. So we want to know how, how often Jupiter is seeing a total or partial eclipse of one of its four major moons. Um, we had much bigger problems trying to do this for Metis because um, Stellarium doesn't agree with me uh, with uh, C Spice, and we kind of want to be able to say that more authoritatively than just saying, "I don't think it does." So we have tweaked the Eclipse program to find partials first, and only look for f um, total eclipses inside of partials. Um, horizons for magnitude changes indicating eclipses. We have not looked at that. We will do that. We're g basically going to say. Does it show Io getting a lot fainter when it's in Jupiter's shadow? Um, if the magnitude thing works, we might be able to get you know massive amounts of data to see exactly when each moon is in eclipse. Um, we were going to see if um, we could get a text API out of Stellarium where we can just print the data from Stellarium uh, without having to actually bring up a, a visual interface. However, Stellarium apparently sucks so badly in terms of computing eclipses, that's not really uh, a big deal anymore. And then we're going to complain about to Stellarium about two things, that zooming in at some, sometimes uh, causes a solar eclipse on Metis to turn into a non-solar eclipse, and that when you're viewing a lunar eclipse from Jupiter, the moons that are being eclipsed do not get darkened. So, um... We did, okay, so we did post to Mathematica the formula for the en route, uh, you know, if you're moving from one point in a great circle to the other, um, the complicated formula that tells you where you are, uh, but, um, but we didn't do the one which says what is the closest to point C, where point C is not on the, um, is not on the, on the circle between A and B. Um, I actually did talk to the, I did email the guy who writes MathJS, and he was really happy about adding these functions. Uh, it's fairly embarrassing. It turns out there's only really two functions that we can add. I mean, three. The Gödel-Mannian function and the function that converts between spherical and XYZ coordinates. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. And now we're looking at some older stuff that I've wanted to do before. Uh, this question got answered already. Um, this was my attempt to bring up a, like a nice little, uh, you know, the stream starts in n minutes kind of thing. Um, not interesting. Okay, um, Max. Um, and I think we already took care of this. Uh, I did post this to GitHub pages. I should probably put a done in front of some of this crap. Um, 
but I won't. Uh, mention streams in my answer. There is some exciting stuff coming up here. I'm just trying to get down to it without skipping anything. Um, we do at some point need to write NASA and ask why they think this is a um, this is a total eclipse and when we say it's not. Complain. Um, all of this is stuff we've done. Magic function, angular delta, penumbral eclipses sucks. There's quite a bit of crap here. What we really want to get down to is uh, the ideas for Sky and Telescope also is wrong because they have, uh, they actually list uh, Jovian eclipses as well. Uh, lunar eclipses, but in a different way, but they can't be right. Um, so this is going to be a huge write-up of an answer. Uh, we might be able to write some of it up right now, even before we have the results. Um, wow. It's still going on my main other machine. That is amazing. In fact, not only is it going, but for IO, it hasn't even cleared. It's still in 1851. That is amazing. And according to this, there are 51,592 partial eclipses of IO between 1850 and 2200. Um, so really quite, quite a lot of them. Okay. Um, okay, now one thing I, c well, there's a lot of things I wanted to do, but let's see. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, things we want to say about Jovian eclipses. Um, okay. Now, one question we have is, how does Stellarium compute magnitude? Uh, because Spice won't do that, Horizons will, uh, but I'm not that interested in doing that right now. Multi-calendar project, no, no, no. Okay, now, let me see how long I've been streaming to see if I want to keep going here for a bit. Uh, it's actually been about an hour and a half, so let's, let's, let's take a quick look here. Um... Um, yeah, here's, here's something interesting. Uh, it turns out the moon can enter more than just the 12 zodiac constellations, and I've actually got a stack exchange posting about this, but there, I don't think anyone lists when the moon enters, sextants is one of the, uh, is, is the constellation, the sextant, and uh, there's only four Google results for moon enter sextants. So if we want, we can actually publish up... Um, you know, uh, Moon enters these various constellations, and we're talking about actual IAU constellations. We're not talking about um, we're not talking about uh, the you know the twelve houses of the zodiac uh, like the astrologers do. We're talking about actual constellations as defined by the IAU. So to do that, we need to um, now Skyfield's already figured out how to uh, how to break up. Uh, stuff into constellations, um, how to determine what constellation something is in. It'd be nice if we could do that. We could probably use the same binary file that they're using uh, to make that determination, and then to sort of determine uh, where each constellation is. So that's that's pretty easy. Um, and so let's see if we can do that. I mean, that is... Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm hesitant to do this. Um, we've just passed into the 15th of January, if you're in the sort of non-existent UTC zone. Although I think people in England are on that time right now. Um, but let's see, let's see if we can, if we can do this. This is, um, this is sort of a worthwhile thing to do. So what we're trying to do now is identify wh where a given right ascension and declination, what constellation it's in, uh, given that we're using the Bessel, the Besselian 1875 coordinates, which are the coordinates that were used for when the constellations were defined. That's when they were straight lines. The constellation boundaries were state, straight lines. They are not straight lines anymore. Um, so to do this, I've pulled Skyfield somewhere, and um, wow, let's see. The main thing to look at here 
there's this one file that he uses that does like 90% of the work uh, constellation boundaries um, I'd like to get this in Spanish okay and then I pipe in with my stupid stuff here and he actually gets this done so this is by the way a very good method of working get Brandon Rhodes to do your work for you very smart guy uh, and he's actually committed to doing, unlike me, he's committed to doing work. So, um, the constellation map, the da -da 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 -da, constellation map, and the only thing we really need from him is the constellation map here. Constellations.npz, I think it is. That might not be the right one. Hang on. Um, This might be a NumPy kind of thing here, um, but I'm pretty sure he actually uses a uh, uses a, a very simple binary file. Uh, let's see, constellation map. Look up, search sorted. Okay, I know it's got a binary function in here somewhere because I've seen it. Um, I'm going to be obnoxious here and actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the latest version here. Although I'm pretty sure I have it, I have a version somewhere else, but I'm not sure it's the latest version. So let's go crazy here, and we'll do a git clone, Python Skyfield, and once. Well, all oh right, we need the actual full path to it. That would be kind of nice if we did that. Um, let's do this instead. Python clone, git clone rather. This, now we're going to get it. Hopefully it'll come down faster than the um, Stellarium came down yesterday. And when I say hopefully, I mean it won't. Uh, so once we have this, I, I'm pretty sure that the file he's using is just a binary file. And everything else he does is really re really easy to, to read okay um, Python and uh, I think anything that has the word constal in it is the constellation lookup map um, yeah here it is constellations data less constellations of NPZ Oh, this is actually a zipped file. Hang on. Okay, that's probably not what the file we're looking for. The file we're looking for is um, is like constellation. Hmm. Okay. Could be wrong. It could be one of the files. Oh, yeah, I think it's that file is the one we're really, we, we really need. Now, we don't want to clutter up stuff here, so we're going to go back to our directory of the day, as I call it, and we are going to copy Skyfield, Python Skyfield, data, what the hell did we cd to last time? Skyfield data. Data constellations at npz dot unzip it. Okay. And the sorted array RA and the sorted NPY we could probably just Oh Jesus Christ, dude. Um so this is apparently a numpy file that we could get we could probably pull crap out of this if we wanted to. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to, um, it's, I mean, there must be a way to get it out with NumPy or something, but anyway, um,
Okay, so this is not quite as nice as I thought it would be. This basically tells you what constellation you're in, uh, given the um, given your uh, position and stuff like that. So, okay, so this may not be as easy to use as I thought it was. Um, okay. Well, I am not happy now. So these are all, oh, so this is just going to be the list of abbreviations, uh, which you can't really see them because he's using triple, um, triple nulls here, but if you actually did less on them, if you did more on them, you would see them. Or maybe you wouldn't. Okay. So this didn't go quite as well as I thought it would. I thought we had a list of, um, I thought we had a very nice list of declinations, like sorted deck and sorted R. Um, would be a very nice list of declarations, of which would be a list of n numbers, basically. And they do not appear to be. So that's not cool. Um, I know there is a way to get... I don't know what Numad does, but... That's not what we want. I know there's a way to dump a, um, a numpy file into something useful. Um, yeah, alright. So now, how do we dump a numpy file? It beats the hell out of me. Uh, and I'm 99% tempted to actually do this uh, on my own, which is not difficult either. So why don't we go ahead and do that. So the I general idea here is I think we have the constellation boundaries. Constellation boundaries. And this really is in a format we can read. Um, oh, these are actually the boundaries between like a Aquila and Aquarius. Um, that's not what I wanted. There is there's another file here that does what we want. Um, these are the the constellations precessed to J2000, which isn't bad actually, but it's not exactly what we want because the precession, you know, we we want to be able to go back to the where they're straight lines. Constellations, uh, constellation boundaries dot dot. And is this in... Um, here we go. These are, the, these are the easier formats of the boundaries. Um, and maybe we should just do a readme. Yeah, okay. And the lowercase readme... Here we go. These are the constellation boundaries from the book that IAU decided to, uh, to use as canonical. Um, so we have boundaries, we have edges, we have all this good stuff here. Counterclockwise, sexagonal, not, there's no sex involved, this is sexagonal, meaning the format is in uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. Decimal, the format is in decimal. Counterclockwise, interpolated boundaries, uh, merged edges, blah, 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 blah. So I think what we can do is we can look at the... Um, I think we can look at bound 18. I, there's something telling me that there's more to it than that, but um, yeah, 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 here we go. These are the boundary lines. Now, so the sort of clever thing here is if we look at the first component, the, the hour lines, the uh, the RAs, the right ascensions, and we sort them and we look at them, there's only 236 of them. Okay, um, and then if we look at the um, declinations, there are only not that many of them. There are only 199 of them. So that means if we could create a grid that's about this big, uh, we could identify what constellation we're in. Um, so I've got to be, we've got to be a little bit careful how we create this grid, because we've got to look, at, we, we need to make sure that we are, 
we need to make sure that the that we know what the inside of a constellation is as opposed to the outside. And there's this issue of counterclockwise and clockwise. So let's take a look at bound in 18. And I meant to do a less there. Um, yeah, I've got to be a little bit careful here because Hmm. Okay, and the main issue here is what's inside and what's outside is the, is the difficult kind of thing to determine. Um, And this is ugly enough, I almost want to return to what Brandon was doing. Because um, he basically figured out, you know, he basically has these things written down. So sorted RA is going to be exactly the same as the numbers we came up with, um, but in a different form. So let's see. Okay, so I think I'm going to need a little bit of help here. We're going to get rid of this thing here. Uh, and we're going to ask for dump numpy file. There we go. Uh, so numpy save text. This is probably not too bad then. Um, saves and ready to attack. That's not exactly what we want. Um, now here's where we show how ugly things are. Using Perl. Um, must include Perl. Um, convert numpy file. to text uh, without Python. Okay. Um, not cool. Not cool. I mean, these are just really numbers in some form. I just wish I knew what the frick the form was. I even know there's 236, uh, 237 of them. Uh, 236 of them because I just computed that. So, um, so really, these look like 8-bit, um, 8-byte rather, which would be 256-bit um, numbers to me. And I'm sure that's what they are, but I have no idea of how to. Um, of how to unwrap them from from um, numpy to something else. Um, so the question is, by the way, the um, the IO eclipses file is still going um, on the other machine. So this will take some time. Um, so the question here is, um, yeah, I'm kind of stumped here. Now, one really terrible way to do this uh, is to use the Wikipedia constellation map, which is in SVG, which is fine.
and they have a really nice um, they have a really nice map that is this one right here and what's really nice of it is I'm pretty sure this is in a um, this is an SVG format so we could literally get the uh, boundaries of each point in there I think yeah this is an SVG file hang on one second Mm. Oh, whoa, 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 no, no, I don't want the Tyco catalog. I want this freaking map. Oh. Yeah. It is an SVG. And we should be able to look at the actual you know, parameters and stuff you use to draw it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, here it is. So, for example, Corvus the Crow. Yeah, this is not helpful. Okay, so I mean it's all in here, I just can't figure out how the hell they're doing this, or what the hell they're doing. Not super cool. Alright, horizontal, vertical, I mean this is, this is, the data's there, but let me see if I can get it from, um, I know that I have in here somewhere, oh here, Spice Constellations. Uh, there we go. Uh, Legend.gift is probably not interesting. Okay. Um, so this actually contains like uh, GIF files of all the of all the uh, constellations, um, and you know these are the boundaries and stuff. Um, um, of course, we can't use these because these are in an image format. Or are they? Hang on, one sec. Yeah, we can't use that. Um, but now let's see if we can use um, stuff that isn't PDF and isn't GIF. There should be a little bit here about what the ba oh wow everything's a PDF. Apparently everything's a PDF. And I think this is just going to be yeah. Okay. So the the trick here will be to use the um, the boundary data the um, interpolate tid merged edges centers interpolated boundaries. I'm trying to find one that's really easy that basically tells me where the inside of a constellation is. Interpolated merged edges. Con constellation centers is actually really useful because that's sort of what tells you what where the inside and outside of these things are. Um, but let's see. Boundary vertices. Um, boundary edges, edges. So this this probably isn't even as good as the other one. Ooh. Oh, these are the borders between two things. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can find something. Al there's, there's one of these should be like really, really easy. And I don't mean, v I mean, busy less. Okay. And these are the vertices that determine where the, the triple boundary points are. Um, oh, hang on. Right, this was my attempt in C to, to uh, determine what constellation you were in, and it was using basically the Mathematica um, definitions of the, the boundary lines. Mm. Oh.
Okay, I have no idea what the hell this was doing. I think I was trying to find the inside of... These are all polygons, essentially. And then we were trying to find what's inside of a polygon, given the counterclockwise... Given a directional list of the edges, we should be able to find out what is inside the, the polygon. Um, so that might be what we need to do. It would be kind of nice to do it in Perl. Uh, but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, damn, I was really hoping I could use uh, Brandon Rhodes' uh, existing files. Okay, I think I'm stuck now. And we're also waiting for other stuff to happen. So let me see, I've been streaming for an hour and 45 minutes. Thank you for watching the stream. I might come back later today. I might not. Bye-bye.